Welcome. This is a special edition of The Breakdown, the post-Briar edition of The Breakdown. <laughs> Joining me on the panel today, the Briar chairman, Peter Inch, who is uh, one exhausted individual <laughs> after putting together a fantastic event. We know how Jeff Thank Stoughton you. feels. He is the champion, so he's elated with London and everything that uh, was included in the specific Briar. I have to ask you, Mr. Chairman, how do you feel about the London Briar now that it is all said and done? Very proud. I mean, our volunteers were wonderful. Um, sponsors were wonderful. Fans, it was great to see 8,200 in there for the final game. I'd say a little sad that it ended, yeah. but uh, really proud of how we uh, pro projected it to Canada. Are you surprised uh, that it's all over? I mean, two years ago, we announced this thing. This has been something in the works for virtually a decade since yeah. the, the JLC opened. And, and now it's over. You, you said you're a bit sad, a bit melancholy. I mean, what kind of feelings have you been wrestling with? Well, I, you know, it's been a 10-year dream of mine mm -hmm. for it to happen. So standing out there, giving out the medals at the end of, the, end of Sunday night, mm -hmm. you kind of go, wow, this is it, it's over. Uh, but everybody's saying, what are we going to get next? Mm -hmm. So I start looking ahead and say, when can we have the briar back? Four years from now, five years from now, let's have it again, so. And Pete mentioned to me that uh, until the wee hours of the morning after the final medals were handed out, he was packing up a moving truck, getting rid of some of the briar elements uh, so they could be en route somewhere else. I mean, that's the unglamorous part of the job that you have. That's right, as soon as it was over, we started tearing out the ice, tearing out everything behind the scenes, and it has to be in Regina mm -hmm. for the world championship. So we had to get it loaded on that truck and get it shipped up. Nine days of the briar, it, um, it's traditional. This is the way it's been. A curling we know is staunch in its traditions. Is it too long, perhaps? Could be, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's tough unless they do a major adjustment to how many teams are allowed in to run it any shorter. Mm -hmm. But they're looking at that. They're thinking of putting in a Team Canada, which might help ticket sales because I'd have a team to promote for a year. Interesting. This one, I couldn't promote a team. I had to wait till they were announced about a month before then start saying, here are the teams that are coming. Yeah, that's the uh, distinguishable difference between the women's game and the men's game mm -hmm. and that the champions are Team Canada. Would be an interesting concept for the men's game. Uh, imagine Jeff Stoughton representing all of Canada and uh, not just uh, Manitoba. Um, the bronze medal game, a bone of contention certainly for the huh. players. Uh, Kevin Martin outspoken on these airwaves saying uh, he does not like the concept. He did not like the game. They played in it, drawing a 7,000 people, but he, he made, he's out of it. He, he he wants to see this game eliminated. I mean, is this is he off base here? Is this something that you need to do to bring people in, or does he have a point? Because that's extra games. These guys could be on a flight out of town. Then why do we have a bronze medal game in the Olympics? If it isn't important mm -hmm. to see who's going to finish third, why don't we just give out gold and silver? But isn't it all about the trophy, Pete? Because, uh, you know, with the World Series, NHL, uh, basketball, it's the ultimate trophy. In the Olympic setting, of course, one, two, three, you, you accumulate the medals, you feel great yeah. about yourself. But you, you saw on the face of Glenn Howard after that loss to Jeff Stoughton, uh, he wanted no part of a silver medal. And uh, hey, you know, uh, God bless the, the teams that played for bronze. They did what they had to do, but it seems like it's, it's championship or bust for these guys, and it's hard for them to wrap their head around anything less. But I think sometimes you have to think, we had 6,000 people in the stands who was there to see yep. two teams play. So on an organizing committee side, I think it's a great game mm -hmm. to help us offset some of our costs and maybe help the event become successful. With merchandise and stuff like that, a little pricey. I mean, how, how do you look at that? Do you think, hey, you know what, maybe our prices were a little too high for, for goods that we wanted people to purchase? Yeah, and it, it was. I, mm. I was purchasing them, so I felt the same thing. The merchandise, we have very little control over as a committee. It's handled by uh, EventMax, who has bought the contract with the CCA. Mm -hmm. But there was some clothes in there that were very high priced. So they found out that a lot of the lower end things were what sold. So hopefully they'll take that information back and when they come to London like they'll fix and, it. Pins, pins stuff, water yeah. bottles, you know, mugs, mm -hmm. those were selling very well. The $175 jackets weren't. Speaking of money, did you guys make any money? Because I know the bottom line is what it's all about uh, when that last rock is thrown. Yeah, I think Warren Hansen and I talked out in the ice as we were tearing it mm -hmm. out, and we both feel we're going to come in on the right side. Mm -hmm. uh, how much it is, we've got to pay all the bills. We've got a dehumidifier cost mm -hmm. that we weren't aware of when we started this that's going to probably take 40000 of it. 
-hmm. So we've got to make sure that everybody's paid and then we'll see how much money we make. The ice situation, uh, an unfortunate kind of situation based on how, how the weather really didn't play its role early in the event. But yeah. hey, you made do, you went on and uh, that's a chunk of money that you had to spend. But what are you going to do, I guess? Well, and that's the thing. We stepped up. You know, what are you going to do? Well, you can say don't spend it and we have bad ice or spend it and make the event successful. And that's what we did. How will this event be felt in the community in years to come? What it, will it be its legacy? I think hopefully in my eyes it's people who never saw curling live that now appreciate how good these guys really are and maybe go out and try the sport themselves. And what's next? Well, what's next? We'll get a big committee back together in a couple of weeks. We'll start looking at our next events. Uh, my future goal would be the Olympic trials. That's where I'll turn my eyes to and really start promoting. But we'll have to get an event or two before then, before we can get to that time frame. 2013 is out, but there are more to come. There is more in the uh, next one, or 2017, I think it is. Um, that's the one I'll be shooting for. It was a lot of fun, Peter. Be proud. Thanks.